is not an option. And a push for private accounts by the president. But can his plan survive? Double talk. The Saudis say they're on America's side. So why is a top official encouraging Saudis to fight Americans in Iraq? An NBC News investigation. A big hit on the notorious Chicago mob. Bosses and made men alike rounded up and charged with a slew of unsolved murders going back decades. And breakthrough. Big news in the treatment of breast cancer. The drug that seems to cut the risk of recurrence in half for many women. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Good evening. Tonight, the battle is now underway over Social Security. When it's over, the program may be changed forever. Whether or not there's a Social Security crisis afoot is not at all certain. But tonight at the Bush White House, where aides admit compromise is not something they like, they realize they could be in an all-or-nothing struggle. While millions of working Americans are hoping that when it's all over, Social Security is more secure. We have two reports tonight, beginning on Capitol Hill with NBC's Chip Reed. Chip, good evening. Well, good evening, Brian. Congressional Republicans say this is a watershed day in the debate over Social Security, moving from that very public debate to actually trying to write a bill. They're calling it Phase 2. On one side of the Capitol today, it was Democrats and their supporters. Are we going to let them get away with it? Railing against the president's proposal to divert a portion of Social Security taxes to individual retirement accounts. On the other side, it was Republicans attacking Democrats for standing in the way of the president's plan. It's time the Democrats quit carping and got serious about Social Security reform. But inside the Capitol, those protests were dismissed as political theater. Republican Senator Chuck Grassley said that after a long public debate, it's now time for Congress to get to work. Uh, doing nothing is not an option because doing nothing is a cut in benefits. Members of both parties agree on one thing, that Social Security needs to be fixed sooner rather than later. But that's where the agreement ends. The parties as sharply divided here as they were outside. You favor um, private accounts, I don't. Democrats said the president's plan is too risky, subject to the ups and downs of the stock market. We do not need to privatize Social Security to save it. That's a very key point. Senator John Kerry's solution, the same one he pushed in last year's presidential campaign. If you just didn't do the tax cut for the top 1% of Americans who've gotten tax cuts galore over the last years, you could pay Social Security benefits through the entire century. But Republicans warned that the coming onslaught of baby boomer retirees will swamp Social Security. They're coming, and they're big. They're going to blow the numbers out of the water. The only way out, according to committee Republicans and some economists, is to allow Social Security to grow with the stock market. If workers want the opportunity to earn a better rate of return, to have ownership and control, give them the choice. Now, Chairman Grassley says he hopes to get a bill out of his committee sometime this summer, but he concedes the committee is so badly split that might not be possible. Brian? Chip Reed, thanks. And now across town to the White House and NBC's David Gregory on duty there tonight. David, good evening. Good evening to you, Brian. As you mentioned, this is not a White House that has been eager to compromise on Social Security. The president has floated some ideas designed to lure Democrats into a negotiation, but so far, not much there. And he's sticking to his guns on the issue of private accounts. Eight say here tonight, they realize the president may ultimately have to give some ground, propose some measures that would keep the program solvent. But Brian, they don't think they're at that point yet. And David, the very much under fire Tom DeLay was seen at the president's side today in Texas. Is there anything to be read into that? Well, there may be, as you know very well. Everybody's been watching the president very closely to gauge the level of his support for Tom DeLay. The embattled House Majority Leader was there. You see him by the president's side uh, on the tarmac approaching Air Force One. He hitched a ride today out to Texas and near his own home district got this important endorsement from the president. And I appreciate the leadership of, of, of Congressman Tom DeLay in working on important issues that matter to the country. 
Later on today, DeLay said that he appreciated those words from the president very much, felt he was humbled by them. The bottom line, say officials here, is that the relationship between DeLay and the president is not personally warm at all. But they add that this president respects DeLay in terms of what he's been able to do for him on his own agenda, and he needs him right now, so he's sticking by him, Brian. David Gregory at the White House for us tonight. David, thanks. And now to Iraq tonight and a close one. U.S. forces apparently came very close to a man they want badly, Alzar Kawi, the number one most wanted al-Qaeda terrorist in Iraq. Details of this close encounter are still becoming known, and we get the very latest tonight from NBC's Richard Engel in Baghdad. The story unfolds like a spy novel. Once again, the most wanted man in Iraq, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, used his instincts and cunning to avoid capture. I think in general, the intelligence is getting better. Having said that, we still don't have Zarqawi. But they almost did. U.S. military sources tell NBC News Zarqawi was traveling to a meeting in Ramadi on February 20th in a pickup truck. Wary, he had a scout vehicle out front. Task Force 626, the elite special forces unit, had set a trap with surveillance drones in the sky and checkpoints on the road. The scout vehicle was pulled over. Zarqawi's truck, about a half mile back, made a quick U-turn and headed in the opposite direction. U.S. special forces chased the truck, but believe Zarqawi jumped out as it drove through an underpass. Apparently that way, he wouldn't be seen from the air. Zarqawi then slipped into a nearby safe house as U.S. forces stopped his pickup. Zarqawi was gone, but U.S. forces did find his driver, personal M16 rifle, laptop computer, and more. Military sources say the computer was like finding Zarqawi's brain. It was filled with contacts, statements, and photographs of Zarqawi. Where? In the My Pictures file. Also seized were about 100,000 in cash and a bag full of small plug-in hard drives. The U.S. military thinks Zarqawi used the hard drives to pass on information to his operatives. So how does Zarqawi elude capture? He's physically courageous. He is extremely cruel to his enemies. And he is seen to be fighting a noble cause. U.S. military officials tell NBC News Zarqawi has told his operatives Baghdad is too hot right now to use as a base, not to settle here. As for Zarqawi himself, the latest U.S. intelligence is he remains in western Iraq. Richard Engel, NBC News, Baghdad. And now to the tricky U.S.-Saudi relationship. It was just yesterday that we saw those pictures of the Saudi Crown Prince Abdullah at the Bush Ranch in Texas hand in hand, as is Saudi custom with President Bush. The Saudis insist they are allies of the United States, especially in the war on terrorism. Here's where double talk comes in, however. An NBC News investigation found that a powerful Saudi official is encouraging other Saudis to go to Iraq and fight American troops there. And as NBC News senior investigative correspondent Lisa Myers reports, it was all caught on tape. Sheikh Saleh al-Luhaydin, seated here to the right of the Crown Prince, is Chief Justice of Saudi Arabia's Supreme Judicial Council. His sermons and words carry great significance. In an audio tape secretly recorded at this government mosque last October and obtained by NBC News, Luhaydin encourages young Saudis to go to Iraq to wage war against Americans. If someone knows he is capable of entering Iraq in order to join the fight, and if his intention is to raise up the word of God, then he's free to do so. He warns Iraq is risky because evil satellites and drone aircraft watch the borders. But he says going is religiously permissible. The lawfulness of his action is in fighting an enemy who is fighting Muslims and came for war. The Sheikh also says those donating money to the fight in Iraq should be sure it actually helps the cause. This statement shows the real face of Saudi government. This dissident says that while Saudi officials, including this Sheikh, publicly oppose jihad in Iraq, privately some send a different message. He is telling Saudis it's okay to go to Iraq and kill Americans and Iraqis, and they won't be punished for doing that. A Saudi spokesman twice denied the tape was authentic, claiming Saudi intelligence analysts determined it was a crude fake. So NBC News called Luhayden himself in Saudi Arabia and played the tape. 
Luhayden confirmed those were his words, saying in Arabic, yes, this is my voice. But the sheikh said what he really meant was that it's not worth it for young Saudis to go to Iraq and that the Iraqis are capable of fighting on their own. This week, Saudi Arabia's crown prince met with the president on economic issues, including oil prices. And a White House official says the problem of extremism was raised. Dozens of Saudis have been tied to suicide bombings and violence in Iraq. And critics claim the Saudis are now dealing with their own problem with extremists by exporting some of them to Iraq. Lisa Myers, NBC News, Washington. In North Carolina today, a former Wall Street trader who rejoined the U.S. Marine Corps after the September 11th attacks is now facing murder charges. Ilario Pantano was involved in an incident in Iraq in which he shot and killed two Iraqis while searching for a terrorist hideout. A preliminary hearing in the case began today at Camp Lejeune to determine whether there's enough evidence for a court-martial. If he's convicted of murder, Pantano could be sentenced to death. In Lebanon tonight, it may have taken 29 years, but the last of Syria's troops left there today with an official farewell ceremony just a few miles from the border. At its peak, Syria had more than 30,000 soldiers in Lebanon, but the occupation had become increasingly unpopular and reached a low point back in February after the assassination of Lebanon's former prime minister, which many Lebanese blamed on Syria. Up next this Tuesday night, NBC News In-Depth. Tonight, the news that some breast cancer patients already know. What may, their, may be their best news of their lives, the cancer is gone because of a new treatment. And later in Chicago, a big mob bust, arrests on charges dating back to the heyday 70s. Sometimes all the right moves can't give high cholesterol the slip. If you're at risk and diet and exercise aren't enough, adding Lipitor can help lower your bad cholesterol 39 to 60 percent. And Lipitor has proven benefits for your heart. Lipitor is not for everyone, including people with liver problems and women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Tell your doctor about other medications you are taking or if you experience muscle pain or weakness as they may be a sign of a serious side effect. So take the next step. Ask your doctor about the benefits of Lipitor. Arthritis pain can make people say goodbye to little things they love. Unless they've heard the good news about Aleve. Just two Aleve are strong enough to stop arthritis pain all day. That would take eight Tylenol. Ask your doctor the good news about Aleve. Nature fanatic. Health nut. Grape nuts eaters have been called many things. There. Fortunately, they haven't heard a word of it. The unique nutty crunch and delicious taste of grape nuts. Live life your own way. Imagine a best-selling minivan. Now, at a five-star crash safety rating and give it a longer powertrain warranty. Back it with five years roadside assistance and price it right. What would you have? The Kia Sedona. It's not only a better value, it's a smarter buy. Get a 2005 Sedona for $18,120 after $3,000 cash back. Hurry, offer ends soon. Wednesday, an amazing NBC special. Does the devil really exist? Witness one man's battle with a demon in a real-life exorcism caught on tape. What do you believe? You know. NBC Wednesday, 8, 7 central. Tonight, airport security took all your stuff. Ever wonder what they did with it? Well, Keith found it on eBay. Countdown tonight on MSNBC. NBC News in depth tonight. The promise of a new breast cancer treatment that could save thousands of lives each year. Researchers say the drug Herceptin has been found to cut in half the risk that a particular form of breast cancer will come back after surgery and treatment. At a time when lots of treatments are touted as breakthroughs, then prove not to be, this one really is being called a lifesaver. In depth tonight, here is NBC's Tom Costello. 
Last month, Darlene Nipper got the news she'd been hoping for. After surgery and chemotherapy, her breast cancer was gone. I'm telling you, I cried. You know, I cried with joy because it makes me feel like I have a chance. I have a chance. I, I might just make it through this. Doctors believe Darlene got that chance because of a drug called Herceptin, which she received after joining a study conducted by the National Cancer Institute and Genentech, Herceptin's maker. The research involved 3,300 women, most with early stage breast cancer that had spread to the lymph nodes. The results were so convincing the drug trials were stopped early. Dr. Edith Perez was the lead researcher. This is certainly one of the biggest discoveries in the clinical care of breast cancer patients in more than 20 years. When administered after surgery and along with standard chemotherapy, Herceptin reduced recurrences of breast cancer by 52%. And after four years, only 15% of patients had a relapse. The caveat, Herceptin only works in 25% of breast cancer patients. Those with too much of a protein called HER2, which can make the cancer very aggressive. Herceptin targets those specific tumor cells. Herceptin had already been approved for treating late stage breast cancer, now treatment for more women. It's a little too early to know precisely how many more women are going to be alive with breast cancer at this early stage, but it does appear to be life-saving treatment for women who had a very um, aggressive form of breast cancer. One potential side effect, a small increase in the rate of congestive heart failure. I'm just looking forward to living a really long time, you know, cancer free. That's what, that's what I'm looking forward to and that's what the news really means to me. For patients and researchers, a hard-fought battlefield victory in the much bigger war on cancer. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. There is this tonight from Phoenix, where a woman who agreed to be a surrogate mother for a childless couple got a lot more than she bargained for, and so did the biological parents. Five times more, their quintuplets were born today, all of them by C-section, all five are boys. Four of the babies are doing well. Sadly, one has a heart problem that will require surgery. The surrogate has agreed to drop her $15,000 fee because she says the parents, Luisa Gonzalez and Enrique Moreno, have enough new expenses all of a sudden on their hands. Still ahead here tonight, why they are rethinking a life-saving technique that has become a way of life in American first aid, CPR. I was just getting to the good part when Uncle Ernie dropped his tongs. Oh, I'd seen that look before. It was heartburn. Before you could say duck sauce, I was there with my Pepsid Complete. I told him only Pepsid Complete starts to neutralize acid on contact and keeps heartburn from coming back all day or all night. In no time, Uncle Ernie was in Mooshu heaven, and I had my eye on a spicy dumpling. Pepsid Complete, just one and heartburn's done. If your skin's dry and thirsty, is your moisturizer running on empty? Introducing new PH2O Everyday Moisturizer by Physoderm. Unlike heavy moisturizers, it goes on light to drench your skin with vitamins and pure moisture. PH2O, what healthy skin's thirsty for. Now make a three inch incision between the fourth and fifth abdominal muscles. Shouldn't you be doing this? Making important financial decisions on your own doesn't make much sense either. That's why Edward Jones prefers meeting clients face to face. Day after day, drop after drop, you test your blood if you have diabetes. But what if the information you're getting isn't right? If you don't code properly, your readings can be up to 43% off. 43%! And that's just a waste of all those little drops and all your efforts. So Bayer developed the Essentia Contour Meter. There's no coding needed. So you get the information you need from every single drop, every single day. The Essentia Contour from Bayer. All of us have internal plumbing. But for some of us with frequent urges, our pipes just don't work as well as they should. Sometimes you worry you could spring an embarrassing leak. So why deal with it on your own when there's something more you can do? Treat it once daily with Vesicare. New Vesicare can reduce urges and may even help relieve bladder leakage. If you have certain types of stomach, urinary, or glaucoma problems, do not take Vesicare. While taking Vesicare, if you experience a serious allergic reaction, severe abdominal pain, or become constipated for three or more days, tell your doctor right away. Common side effects are dry mouth, constipation, blurred vision, and indigestion. 
So why wait? Ask your doctor today if Vesicare is right for you. Fewer urges and leaks. With new Vesicare, it's not just a pipe dream. Go someplace. Do something. Be someone. Sponsored by Chase on NBC. The Chicago mob is on the ropes tonight to use their term of art whacked by the feds in a dragnet they call Operation Family Secrets. Now some of those secrets, in many cases held for decades, are public. Federal prosecutors have brought what they described as the most significant racketeering indictment ever against the Chicago outfit. We get details tonight from NBC's Kevin Tibbles. The violent history of the Chicago mob dates to the rum-running days of Al Capone and before. An American cultural staple romanticized on television and in the movies. And you afraid to stand up for yourself? You want to do it now? No. You want to yeah. go mad now? But all very real. In a massive Chicago-style dragnet, 14 alleged members of La Cosa Nostra, or LCN, have been fingered. This is the first investigation that I can recall, an indictment that I can recall, that involved so many murders, which really gets the heart of what the LCN is, and that is a bunch of murderous thugs. The indictment is a sweeping list of organized crime activity, racketeering, extortion, and 18 murders. One memorable hit from 1986 left Tony the Ant Spilatro and his brother Michael beaten to death with baseball bats and buried in shallow graves. Later portrayed in the 1995 film Casino. Chicago's most spectacular gangland slaying, the 1929 St. Valentine's Day Massacre, seven dead, ordered by Al Capone. That warehouse here where the St. Valentine's Day Massacre took place is no longer standing, but the history remains intact. The family tree of the Chicago mob, they call it the outfit here, traces directly back to Al Capone. It's been one organization continually. Mob historian John Binder and former organized crime investigator Bob Fusel say the outfit's been a part of Chicago's seedy side for a century. Organized crime changes colors to remain the same. And the sameness is basically one of making money. The investigation was dubbed Operation Family Secrets after a brother of a jailed mobster began naming names. But the romantic view of the mob persists, with the arrest creating a mini boom for tours at Chicago crime scenes. Put your hands out where I can see them. Kevin Tibbles, NBC News, Chicago. In Maryland tonight, a roundup of another kind entirely. A herd of buffalo back home after roaming off the range, way off the range. Early this morning, nine American bison escaped from their Baltimore County farm and meandered through several upscale neighborhoods until police managed to coax them onto the tennis court of a condo complex. As you can see, getting the buffalo off the court and into the trailer wasn't easy. It did, however, get done. No one in this cattle call got hurt. Now to where the bulls often roam, though not today. On Wall Street, the Dow lost more than 91 points. NASDAQ was down more than 23. And we're back with more right after this. NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Brought to you in part by Aflac. Ask about it at work. In the future, everyone will protect their eyes from sun damage like they protect their skin. Transitions lenses. They automatically adjust to changing light and block harmful UV rays and glare. So don't wait until tomorrow. The danger is here today, and so is the protection. Ask your eye care professional about Transitions lenses. Transitions. Healthy sight in every light. It's hard for people with diabetes to lose weight. My advice, exercise and try Glucerna weight loss shakes made for people with diabetes. Clinically shown to help manage blood glucose while helping you lose weight. Delicious Glucerna weight loss shakes. Ready to make the move to Levitra for a strong, lasting experience? Ask your doctor if Levitra is right for you. Levitra is where many men with ED count on to improve their erectile quality. Strong and lasting when he wants it. It's what Levitra is all about. Levitra is only for men healthy enough for sexual activity. Do not take Levitra if you take nitrates for chest pains or alpha blockers for prostate problems or high blood pressure, as this may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Side effects may include headache, flushing, and stuffy or runny nose. In the rare case an erection lasts for more than four hours, seek immediate medical attention. Strong, lasting. Experience Levitra for yourself. If you're on another ED treatment, maybe it's time to try Levitra. Ask your doctor about a free sample. Who will call 911? 
when the airbags deploy. Or tell us where we are when we're lost. Who can tell us if to check engine light, something serious. Or no big deal. Who will unlock our car? When we leave the keys in it. Who can help the police track a carjacking with my little brother inside? Someone should. Someone should. Johnson, Smith here tells me he's now fired you 15 times. Yet every day, here you are. So why don't you leave? Kellogg's Raisin Bran Crunch. With honey granola clusters, crunchy flakes, and tasty raisins. I understand you. You don't take no for an answer, do you? Smith, be more like Johnson. Kellogg's Raisin Bran Crunch. Sounds good. Murder in the Hollywood Fast Lane. Next extra, a series of shocking freeway shootings. The eerie parallels between the crime and a primetime storyline. Then, the three-hour diet that lets you eat chocolate and candy. Next extra. Tonight at 7 on NBC4. Protect yourself from identity theft at the NBC4 Shredded Day. Since the day it was introduced, it has been a lifesaver, literally. Wherever you live, there are classes in CPR, the combination of breaths and chest compressions that will bring a victim back to life, just as it has thousands of times. But is it the very best first response? There is a new practice out there that some say puts the same basic moves to better use. Here is NBC News Chief Science Correspondent Robert Bazell. Six hundred thousand people die each year in this country when their hearts stop suddenly and professional help does not arrive in time. That's why for 40 years, the Red Cross and Heart Association have been teaching citizens to perform CPR with a combination of 15 chest compressions, then two breaths in the mouth. But Dr. Gordon Avey is out to prove that CPR, as it is done now, is a gigantic failure. What's at stake here? What's at stake? thousands of people's lives, doing it right, advancing medicine. I mean, what's medicine all about? Dr. Avey, director of the Sarver Heart Center at the University of Arizona, says the big problem is those One, breaths to two, the mouth. Three. That's a prolonged interruption of chest compression. During that interruption, he says, the critical flow of blood to the brain stops. As and more important, surveys out, show most people one, won't two, blow in a stranger's two, mouth, as captured in this Seinfeld episode. I think he's going to need mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Mouth-to-mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. Anybody could do this. Anybody this I could do it. Yeah. The right way? Avi says it is simple, continuous middle, chest compression. Right 100 times a minute so, with no breaths. Here, put the heel of your bottom hand right, right below the bed. You have to take everything else out of your mind. You're, you're Dr. Avi has convinced the city of Tucson to start teaching classes with his new method. You wouldn't have so much to remember. This is easier because it's just one step. Dr. Avi not only persuaded the public here in Tucson, he convinced the fire department and the paramedics that his was the right way to do CPR. The paramedics in the field are reporting that it's an easier way to resuscitate code arrests, and they're seeing a lot better response from the patients. So far, the American Red Cross and Heart Association are staying with the old method. You know, there's a huge investment of uh, 40 years of doing it that way. But Dr. Avey believes the world will eventually see it his way and save a lot of lives. Yeah. Simple as that. Simple as that. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Tucson. And that is Nightly News for this Tuesday evening, the 26th day of April 2005. I'm Brian Williams in New York. We'll look for you right back here tomorrow evening. Good night. NBC Wednesday discovered the new hit Revelations. I hope we can find that baby. The child's mother is found. God is his father. As the end of days draws near, another is taken. We've got him and we're keeping him. Revelations continues. NBC Wednesday, 9 8 Central. This was spring. Now it's bigger, bolder, better.
with Ford's Big Deal Spring Event. Great new Ford's Bigger Deals. Ford F-150 with total cash savings of up to $4,245. It's the truck with the power you want, the features you need, and total savings of up to $4,245. It's bigger. It's back. It's Ford's Big Deal Spring Event. Going on now at your local Ford store. When severe weather strikes, count on the Forewarn Storm Team. 